Today, as a very special treat, we have the the great granddaughter of Emmeline Pankhurst, Helen Pankhurst, who's going to talk to us about how far we've come. And after she's spoken, there'll be a chance to have a chat with Helen over in the grey porter cabin there and get a signed copy of her book, These Not Words. So let's have a very big hand for Helen Pankhurst. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, yes brilliant. OK, so we've got a few minutes to cover a lot of history over 100 years, because I think as many of you know, hands up if you know that this is a centenary of when some women got the vote. OK, good. So symbolically, really, really important, the date when some people got the vote, some women got the vote, not on equal terms. Um, but this whole year is part of that centenary, coming up to the end of the year, the 14th of December, when finally, up and down the country, in all parts of the country, women, for the first time, voted. Symbolically, really, really powerful. Um, as part of that symbolism, on the 14th of December, the statue of Emmeline, in a way, the mother figure, the icon of that fight, and the very, very difficult fight that it was for women to get the vote, the, her statue is going to be erected in Manchester, in St. Peter's Square. Again, the centre of Manchester. Important that we remember the, symbolically, um, the, the symbolic difficulty of the fight and some of the key characters. I know that right throughout the country, we're also trying to remember many other women. Um, I heard just uh, as I was coming here that there was somebody who knew that their grandmother was a suffragette, etc., etc. I'm, so, I'm sure in your own histories there are women that were part of this fight. So that was 100 years ago. It took another 10 years for equal franchise, for women to be treated equally in terms of their political voice as citizens. But how far have we got since then, since those 90 years? If you look at every single aspect of women's lives, from the political space, we don't have equal representation by any means yet. If we look at how policies are enacted, do we really have an equal eye on some of the policies that women might prioritise? for many reasons, to do with biological differences, to do with gender and cultural differences, the prioritisation of issues such as care, social infrastructure, whereas men tend to prioritise physical infrastructure. And it's not to say we need one, not the other. It's to say we need both, and we need both really understood and valued. So how far have we got? I've been doing a lot of speeches up and down the country, and I try and get people to tell me how far they've got by putting their fingers up, and I'd like you to do the same. So zero in politics would mean we'd not moved forward at all. Five would mean we've got equality. Two, three, four would be somewhere in between. How far do you think we've got? All of you put your fingers up with whatever you think is relevant and let's look around you. The mayor as well is saying two. Between two, one, the odd three. So clearly we're not there yet. What about in terms of economics and issues of equal pay and women's financial autonomy and pay gap issues? Um, maternity pay issues, the equal valuation of work. How far have we got? Let's go for a score again. So I'm seeing ones, twos and threes again. We're not there yet. How about in terms of women's sense of identity, their sense of self, their relationships with their families, men's roles in the families, the equal valuation of partners in this social world? Because surely this world is about what we do at home as well as what we do outside. Are we there yet? What do we think? I'm seeing fours, I'm seeing ones. We're not there yet. What about in terms of violence, violence against women? And I'm saying that knowing that here we are almost in the middle of the 16 days of activism, which are a global uh, marker on issues of violence against women. Are we there yet? Have we resolved the reality that, to me, the reality that we still see women as victims, they experience violence, and we still too often see male as aggressors? If you look at all aspects of women's lives, that fear of violence still permeates too much, I think. But what do you think? Are we there yet or not? We're not moved at all for some people. We're even zeros on this. Um, by the way, um, Care International, which is an organisation I work for, are uh, circulating a little leaflet which, um, allow, which shows you information about the uh, me, uh, You Don't Own Me song. If you download that, it's a really powerful song uh, by the Urban Voices Collective, which uh, you can, by downloading, a bit of the money goes to Care International for some of its work, including on addressing violence against women. So clearly we need to do a lot more in many spheres. But what about culturally? And that's the really important one here when we're thinking about sports. 
And sports is fascinating in this area because sports is about women in action, women doing things, not about what women look like. And in society, too often, it's what women look like and what men say and do that matters. Sports is the opposite. Sports is a chance that women are out there doing things, showing role modeling them in action. And in football, we know the history of football where women 100 years ago were able to draw score, scores of people, 50,000 people coming to the matches. So we're having to catch up now. There's still so much to be done in order for women in sports, women in football to be given the same visibility, the same sponsorship, the same uh, space, the same media attention. Still so much to be done. This place, Lewis Football Club, really pioneering transformation. Transformation not just by giving women in sports that visibility, but also looking how men in football are involved in this sport. We can transform both. We can transform women in sports and men in sports by looking at this slightly differently, by having both lenses on the initiative. So really critical that, and, and, and great shout out to Lewis Football Club right now. And, and, and the other critical point about this centenary year and this match is that Lewis Football Club is playing against Manchester United Manchester is the home place of the suffragettes. It's both the personal home of Emmeline Pankhurst, where she um, grew up, where she had all of her kids, including the three women that were part of that movement. You have four women in history in that family of Pankhurst. When else do we have four women in history? One mother, three daughters. Um, and Manchester was the home place of the suffragettes, um, both personally and politically, where the movement was born. So here today, on the centenary, almost on the centenary to the day, I mean, two weeks from now, is when that first vote took place. You have the Lewis Football Club pioneering these ideas of equality, and Manchester with the ideas of suffrage and the historical link to it. That's why it's such a powerful match. I hope you really enjoy it. It's important that we support both teams, because that's also part of the change that this is um, all about. Um, I hope it's a, it's a fabulous game, and I really look forward to watching it. Thank you for inviting me.